<laughs> oh no, no, no it's virtual willius that's what most people call me you can okay, call me i was, will. I was gonna say better. willie boy but like i don't want to be pressing nicknames or anything too early on you know what willie boy could goes kind of hard no <laughs> <laughs> i mean but, but either way mm -hmm. i've just been kind of rolling with it you seem casual you seem confident in yourself so if you don't mind like introducing yourself uh to the peeps at home would love a quick little introduction before we hop into it yeah, for sure. Um, hey guys, my name is Willius. You probably see me on TikTok as the Valorant accent, not even trolling brain dead guy. Um, if you play Valorant, you probably heard of the phrase Skull Emoji Time 7. I've been really honored to blow up on TikTok and just be known across the Valorant community for uh throwing some games while well as throwing their games with a Valorant accent. So yeah, I'm really excited to be here with Jake and yeah, can't wait to see what happens. And heck yeah, it's nice to finally realize that we have met in person and now I won't forget the face. Uh, <laughs> it, it, it's so cool when you're walking around all these facilities, like you don't really realize all the people that are around like yourself. I mean, it's, it's freaking crazy. So let, let's hop into that all the way backtrack. Where were you born and raised? Born and raised in Boston, Massachusetts. Been here all 18 years of my life. Dang, dude, a Boston guy. There's a lot of oh, Northeasters cool. kind of out there. Oh yeah. yeah, I mean like yeah, East Coast, Best Coast. Kind, kind of, kind of biased opinion there, but in my opinion, Boston's been my whole time all my life, and yeah. And so, uh, growing up, big gamer. Uh, were you an athlete? What, what were your hobbies that you found yourself in? Growing up, my parents have always uh, not been very supportive of gaming and such, and they were always like the they had the stereotypical like strict parent stereo uh, thing, which is like you can't game, you have to focus on your studies, focus on your grades, et cetera, et cetera. So I was never really never able to get into like big gaming full time. But um, don't tell you on this, but Minecraft, Call of Duty, come on, you see your friends playing all that, you just have to somehow. And so I kind of snuck on my friends' Xboxes, kind of watched YouTube, especially what what are, what are some good old names? PewDiePie, Dan TDM, those Minecraft YouTubers. On top of like Sunday, and then watching. And watching all the playthroughs of Far, uh, what is it, Far Cry 4, of Uncharted, all these are like core, core memories of gaming. And it was until last year, yeah, during quarantine, when I really was able to get my first PC. And that's when I fell in love with Valorant. Um, I always used to watch the CSGO majors as well. And when Valorant came out, I always thought of it as like a CSGO knockoff. But when I first played it on my first PC, it was like game changing. And boy, that's when I boy. really, yeah. Are you telling me that you didn't have a PC until like last year or so? Mm -mm, no, sir. I, I, okay. Kind of lied about that because I played Valorant on a boot camped MacBook Pro from 2011 at like 25 frames per second. And then I got my first every pre built, which is the one that I still have. I'm using this one right now, fun fact. And I got it last year to May of 2021. And that's when everything started. So, yeah. <laughs> Dang, dude. So you, you are a, a late bloomer uh, of that younger generation like i mean that's that's pretty crazy so when did you actually you know date wise start to finish how long have you been at it now clearly not that long but you've done very well for yourself uh is this regarding content creation like just gaming in general or uh, i guess i should say yeah content creation well um okay well i started gaming uh when i got that or i started like big time gaming when i got that pc back in may of 2021 it was late may i remember and then i fell in love with valorant and then quarantine was happening so i had online school which gave me more time to play valorant while classes were happening but we're not going to get into that it's my former teacher's gonna be mad and then over the summer i got really invested into like internships and and like a whole bunch of other stuff and for the some of my fans out there on twitter they probably might know me as like the harvard valorant guy since i made a big tweet about it like a couple months back not like not a couple like two months back and it was just like i was i'm golden game but i'm radiant in school and i got into harvard for that one and that was like the little joke behind it but um my actual content creation career started i'd say uh, on like december i'd say december 14th of 2021 so just around half a year ago um when i really got into tiktok and i was talking to my friend about this and he was like will if you spend eight hours a day playing this stupid game like do something with your life about it and i was like you know what fine let's go on tiktok and i started off making those really cringe valorant e-dater uh whatever whatever pocket sage jet daddy type of tiktoks <laughs> um and then my little series this this some people might flame me for this so my series of playing valorant until i get a girlfriend was 
what made me enter the Valorant TikTok gaming scene. I think I got like 30k followers in that month. I was really like proud of myself for doing that. And then from like February to late March, uh, February to early April was where I just kind of churned out videos every single day, just everything about Valorant. It could be jokes, it could be more of that e-dater, it could be more of that finding girlfriend stuff, like Discord, that entire genre of stuff that a lot of the Valorant communities known themselves to be in, I tried to make as much content out of it. And then it was late April where I really hit it off uh, with the Valorant accent. The POV, Valorant player breaks up with his girlfriend. That was my video that hit, I think right now it's at like 12 million views on TikTok. Um, and a couple of other ones also in the tens of millions, which is pretty, pretty fucking phenomenal. And I'm really grateful for the support that everyone in the community has given me. And yeah, you were right. I'm a bit of a late bloomer getting my PC so late and kind of blew up recently, I'd say in the past couple of months, but it's all happened so fast. Yeah. I mean, that, that's, that's gotta be crazy. It seems like you have your wits with you in terms of like, you've, you've hit it off fast, but you've quickly sparked off into other platforms as well. So was TikTok your, your first platform of choice or what did you begin doing first? Was it YouTube or, or where, where did you actually begin that cycle? Well, TikTok was my first platform of choice. Um, I've only recently begun to expand on YouTube, um, given that I wanted to include a lot of my Twitch streaming and stuff and all those clips and such. So I think I began TikTok in late December for the past couple of months. And YouTube, I began last month. And Twitch streaming specifically, I began just around February. So yeah, I think it goes from TikTok to Twitch to YouTube. So yeah. And that's, that's also interesting in itself. Like, I don't, I guess when it comes to explosive, like a lot of people have started on a TikTok, but maybe it's a difference in generations of a lot of people before TikTok, of course, didn't have it to start on. So it was YouTube mm. first and then to Twitch. And then when TikTok came around. So have you ever thought back of, I mean, it seems like you have a strategy in mind of you, you certainly had a blow up period and now you're trying to expand to other platforms. Where do you see the future going uh, in terms of your content or the platforms of choice? Well, I'll continue churning out TikTok content, but more or less not on the daily because I realize that as you grow firstly as a TikTok content creator, the algorithm judges you very harshly on the quality of content that you produce. Like you can, there are some creators that I know that used to get like millions of views with hundreds of thousands of followers, but now they get like 10K views or 20K views on a TikTok, which is all very respectable, but it's nothing compared to their past algorithm, like prime in a sense. And in terms of my future growth, I feel like my TikTok content, even if I have posts like once every three or four days, as long as I make sure it's stuff that's relatable, that stays on the algorithm, I'll continue going on TikTok. But over the past couple of weeks, I've been especially focusing on Twitch streaming because Twitch streaming is, is, is really hard to grow on if you're starting off. But if you have something like, I think I have like 460,000 followers on TikTok right now, you have like a, that base behind you, it's far easier to get your name out there. And uh, Twitch, TikTok, and YouTube aren't the only ways you can grow. Obviously, there's Twitter, which I was able to find Jacob on, as well as some, recognize so many other pros and such. And through Twitter, I was also really able to grow my reputation in the community. And my future, I feel like I'm going to spend a lot more time streaming. And since I just recently graduated high school, this entire summer is going to be full of streaming, full of full-time content creation. I'm really excited to do so. So, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, hey, a huge congratulations. It's crazy that I'm talking to... You're not the first one I, I'm talking to that's just about to graduate high school and has like a significant future built out for himself. But hey, it's still big choices to make, right? So when it comes to graduating high school, congratulations. Thank you. What What are your future choices there? Will you be pursuing college and then content creation and streaming on the side? Or what's the move? Well, over the summer, I'll be full-time content create, uh, creating content. And then by the time early September rolls around, I'll be attending Harvard uh, for my freshman year. And my plans, at least... My plans are to at least get a undergraduate degree at Harvard, either in something like communications or economics. So at least if content creation in the end doesn't work out and I'm crossing my fingers, that it does work out. I'll have something to I'll, I'll have a nine to five job to rely on at least. But over the course of my four years of college, I anticipate that I'll be staying in. Um, I'll still be streaming every single day. I'll be still making content. It's 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 basically the same schedule that I've had in high school. But it's just that with college, I don't have to wake up as early and I have a lot more time and a lot more flexibility. So I'm still really excited to do so. Um, but there's one exception. If I like continue to blow up more and more and more and more and more, um, 
I might take easier classes, whatever, but I, finding this balance between college and content creation is something that I still just strive to achieve. So, yeah. Yeah, and plus, uh, we can be honest about this, man. It's not an average college by any means. <laughs> so, so, so it wasn't a ploy. Sorry, I've, I've never had the chance to talk to a, to a Harvard uh, about to be. I mean, so, <sighs> so, you, so you were telling the truth in all of that. I mean, what's that, what's that like? Obviously, you're pretty studious. Um, so are you, are you excited for that? I mean, is it going to be difficult to balance Harvard while playing <laughs> Valorant and, and trying to make a, a little career out of that as well? I, 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 to be completely honest, I anticipate time management is going to, it's going to really, really, really matter there. But I feel like a part of me attending Harvard and um, I've learned this a lot from Twitter is that I've been able to serve as a role model for a lot of rising juniors, rising seniors in high school who are applying for colleges and who want a game. But at the same time, their parents are telling them you have to focus on grades and stuff and stuff. And I've made a lot of Twitter threads that have gotten like a lot of interactions from the younger members of the Valorant or even gaming community who are in high school, who have parents who are strict, who don't let them game. And I've given them advice, like secret tips and tricks on college essays, on college applications and on this type of stuff. So I feel like me going to Harvard is only a small element and can only help me with my content creation in the future. So, yeah. And forgive me if I'm overstepping here. We can we can brush past it as well. But mm -hmm. there's also a twit longer you got, I think, I believe, pinned on your Twitter as well about being kicked out. Is that something you're allowed to elaborate on or, or speak to? Because that also uh, drew some pretty big traction as well. Yeah, this this story, um, I got kicked out on February 3rd. I've told this to my uh, viewers. I told this on my TikTok as well. But I was kicked out of my house on February 3rd, and it's gotten a lot more easier for me to talk about it. At first, it was a very vulnerable subject, but I grew up with abusive parents. And this is sort of serves as a trigger warning to some people listening, but um, I grew up with very abusive, um, not very, very controlling, and very just like not understanding parents. And it's been a struggle to growing up at least to fight through it all as while maintaining grades while trying to pursue something that no one else in my family supported and i was really fortunate enough i was fortunate enough to escape this toxic atmosphere this toxic household and environment when i was 18 but at the same time it was like being plunged into adulthood at when, when you're still in high school and i'm sure that a lot of um the, i'm not definitely not the only one out there getting kicked out of your house um <clears throat> It's stories that you hear online, and I'm sorry if I'm not being as fluid with my uh, with my speaking oh, here, but totally it, yeah, it's 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 been difficult at least. And it's knowing that you have an online community backing you and supporting you, that like really really helps me and such. But um, I guess the moral of the story is here that I kind of realized that after getting kicked out, after getting kind of abandoned by the people who were supposed to raise you, um, finding new purpose through content creation and finding new goals in life and finding a lot more motivation, having a lot more support has really, I guess, made me happier. And I guess content creation in a sense has like kind of saved my life. So, yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I, I can't speak to that. And of course, uh, it's a crazy situation to have to go through when it comes to dealing with that kind of stuff. Like you, you mentioned the online community. Have you made some, some, real homies or friends out there in the, in the Valorant space uh, in, in the past year or so? Oh, 100%. The online friends, I guess if, like, if, if, like, if you ask your parents and their thoughts on online friends, they're like, oh, these guys aren't real, these are yada, yada, yada. But I've made some like closest, closest online friends who have supported me mentally, um, f like fiscally, um, throughout all of this. I've had, I think the, one of my best friends, is, he's an online friend, his name is Matt. Um, I met him when I just started playing Valorant, and he's been with me through thick and thin, Watch, uh, like giving me guidance, supporting me, and like he's like a very close personal friend of mine. But at the same time, in the Valorant scene as a whole, I, I mean, I've been able to make friends with people like big names like Sinatra. I've known Kaide for a long, long time. Um, just entering the pro scene and being welcomed by a lot of the big names in Valorant has also made me like really feel at home. So yeah, my, my peace of mind is saying that online friends sometimes are the friends that will last. So yeah. Yeah. It's, it's wild. Like the age we kind of grew up in where it's mm -hmm. like, I, I got homies that I've known for longer than a lot of people I've known in person. 
like I've known online homies for eight years, 10 years, and like finally getting to meet them at events and stuff. And I'm sure you'll get there eventually, right? Like, <laughs> like one day you will definitely get there where it's like you're finally meeting them in person and you recognize the voice or the face, but it's just a bit different in, in person. Uh, take me back to like when this was all taken off and you still were in high school and obviously very studious and, and having a lot on your plate. What was like mm -hmm. a daily schedule for you? And I always ask this to people, but you, I mean, I've never had the chance to talk to someone like yourself. You know, like you, you obviously spend a lot of time, you obviously dedicate a lot of time to whatever it is you're doing. So, and you also mentioned time management. So I'm curious to hear your schedule of a layout of an average day. Well, okay. An average day would be, let's start off when I wake up. I wake up at around 6.30 in the morning um, since I have to be at school by 7.25. So I wake up at 6.30 morning, eat breakfast, get dressed, to get carpooled to school. From 7.25 to around to 2.15 is when the school day uh, goes for it. And I go to school, I go to classes, yada, yada, yada. And then from 2.15 to 4.30 is my time to do homework. It's my time to go to my extracurriculars, to go to clubs, to lead clubs. I do clubs. I'm the president of a couple of clubs from Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And those times I'm not really able to do homework, but I literally grasp at every single possible chance I can do to study and stuff because starting at 5 to 7.30, um, I do sports. I'm the captain of my uh, varsity rowing team at my high school and rowed for four years of my life, probably apart from content creating. My, the, the rowing community that I've been in has also really supported me. And after I get home from crew practice at 7.30, it's around 8, I eat dinner, take a shower. By then, it's like 8.30. And then from like 8.30 to, I guess, around... 9 30 to 10 i finish my homework i do some study i do some last minute preparation for the school day tomorrow and right at 10 is my is where content creation willius comes in from 10 to however many hours i decide to stream that night i stream and then i typically end stream at around 12 and then from like 12 to 1 30 ish i have to make content i have to make the tiktok i have to edit in premiere pro and uh yeah and i go to bed around like two so yeah so you're actually insane. Bro, what the frick? Is that sustainable? It was? Well, not any well, because I got summer now. I don't have to go to school anymore. Okay, so you catch but, back up on your sleep during the summer. I get it. Okay. Yeah, well, in the weekends occasionally, but yeah. So I don't know. A lot of people and this is uh, this is serious, serious, serious. I'm looking at the camera at this. Do not sleep like I do. Four to five hours of sleep a night is not good for you. It is not good for de development in any type of child. I just did it because, because yeah. I'm Willius, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need my sleep. God. <laughs> oh my god! But yeah, like I, I've always been able to like I survive on lower amounts of sleep. But it, it, at times, there were times where I felt like I was gonna burn out. But there was all there was always the motivation, especially after I got kicked out. I was like, prove your parents wrong. Prove. Hey, prove those who doubted you wrong and get out there. And when I blew up, that was even more motivation to keep doing what I do. So, yeah. Do you get recognized at all in school or did you? Like, are... oh, in school, not only in school, I get recognized out in the street, bro. It's kind oh, of crazy. Frick, yeah. How do, you, how do you deal with those interactions? In school, you, you could always hear like some eighth grader or like some like 15 year olds like, oh my God, is that Willius? Skull of OG times seven. Oh my God. Oh, it's really it's really wholesome to meet kids in school, but outside in the street, like I, one of my most distinct memories was I was walking down uh, some uh, Cambridge Square, and some kid came out of this like glasses store. It was like this eyewear store, and he's like, "Wait, you're Willius, right? Can I get a picture?" And like full on just comes out of the store, spot, spots me from inside like the glass windows of the store, and I'm like completely taken aback. I was hanging out with friends. He was like, can we get a picture? I was like, yeah, for sure. And so ever since then, I get recognized like a couple of times a week. Just like, oh my God, you're the, you're the Valor Axing guy, right? And it's, it's surreal because it's gone to the point where like, I kind of realized that my TikToks haven't just influenced the Valorant community, but just almost a whole huge bunch of the gaming community. You can see the biggest streamers like Tarek, XQC, and I've been fortunate enough to be featured to be his, thumb to be his thumbnail for his YouTube videos. And like XQC, Tarek, uh, Valkyrie, Disguised Toast, all these big, big names kind of know like 
the stuff that I do, which is pretty cool. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, did you, did you ever expect it to get to this point? Like when you first started, what were your aspirations? I feel like where I am now is only a part of the journey. Like I, I one day I want to be like, at least not even in the Valorant community, but in the Twitch community to be like, to be like, oh my God, that's Willius. Like he, he's wholesome. He helps people with college. He helps people be happy. And um, when I first started, no, I didn't expect myself to blow up to even where I am now. But it, it's all been so surreal. And it's just like I average, what, like 200, 300 viewers on Twitch. And that's that, that's that's insane because it's like imagine 200 people watching you every night play video games and talk to them. And it, it's an honor, I'd say. So, yeah. Yeah, it's it's pretty crazy to know that, you know, not so long ago, like these things just weren't possible. What do you think you'd be doing if Valorant never came around? Well, that's a tough one. <laughs> oh my god, I gave you a tough question. Let's oh, go. <laughs> that's my goal. What would I be doing if Valorant never came around? Well, dang, that's actually hard. Let me think about this for a quick sec. I think I'd still get the PC. But for much, much later, I'd say like instead of getting the PC in May, I'd probably get in like August or September. And I don't think I would ever pursued content creation as as eagerly if Valorant didn't exist. Because when Valorant came out, I kind of just like connected to the game. It's just like I I really, really enjoy playing the game out of compared to any other game that I've played in my past. Minecraft, Minecraft, obviously it's an OG, but I didn't feel like making content out of it. CS:GO it was too hard and I was way too bad at it. But Valorant, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like there. I'm gold flat level. So I'm like kind of not the worst, but it was just like, if I, if Valorant didn't exist, I'd probably just be playing video games and not making a lot of content, to be honest with you. Yeah. Just enjoying streaming. It. Yeah. Just be enjoying the game, just enjoying gaming, but not instead of just like making content. But yeah, that was a very good question. Holy crap. Okay. <laughs> Got one, dude. Got one. Uh, also, it, it seems like you do draw inspirations, or at least you, you look up to or respect a lot of streamers out there. Uh, can you name like five, if not Valorant streamers, just streamers in general that you know might be kind of inspirations for yourself or people you look up to and respect in the space? Yeah. Um. Off the top of my head, I can name Kaide. Um. I've watched and known Kaide since since she was under a thousand viewers. So it was like last like February. Now she averages easy seven, eight K, 10 K at the same time. And when, when she was still growing, um, she was also a college student at the time. So balancing her explosive level of growth and her personality on top of streaming, everything was something that I really, re I really, really respect. And she and I, we keep in contact sometimes. And um, I really appreciate for all, like she serves as a role model, not only for, content creators but especially for women of the gaming community as well as valent community like if 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 you think of kaide as a voice a voice of reason of judgment and she's just a general likable and really respectable character um on top of that other streamers that i really respect um let's see xqc xqc despite his the biggest streamer on twitch just him his personality he's just a really funny guy and like, I hope to one day that I can just effortlessly make people laugh with whatever I do. And um, Sinatra, Sinatra, like the Valor accent couldn't have been made without him and his like the way that he talks with him, Zoms and Prod talk. I kind of was able to combine. OK, funny story. The way the Valor accent was created was because I kept saying stuff with my friends in real life, like, oh, my God, you're trolling. What are you doing? You're actually throwing. Oh my god, you're actually brain dead. How do you get like a 40 on a test? And then my friends kind of got annoyed at me for doing it. And I was like, you know what? I haven't really seen people incorporate Valorant into like real life conversation. So let's just do that. And boom, it blows, it blows up. So I got to attribute some of that success to uh, Sinatra, Prod, and Zom. So yeah. I need, oh, oh, so you just went, you just freaking hungered down on all three of them. Gotcha. All right. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. I was, like, okay. <laughs> I was like, I'm waiting for two more, man. That's oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> and It sounds like you have many more. And uh, it's crazy how some of those ideas just change everything. And it seems like you have the intellect that you probably have some other ideas uh, in your future as well. Have you, like, what's that process look like? Uh, is it always a, a friendly conversation that leads to these ideas? Or do you ever kind of crunch down and 
and get these ideas on paper or what's the process for thinking about those kind of things? Oh, Ooh, okay. This is fun. This is, this is actually funky. So my idea generating process used to be, used to be like after stream, I would like sit down in my chair and like lie on my bed and like write on my Apple notes app. See if I can pull this up. Um, right on my Apple notes app, all of my TikTok ideas. Um, TikTok content ideas. Like you probably can't see it, but these uh, let me are let me screenshot that. Let me screenshot that. Wait, let me let me pull up the title for you. TikTok content ideas. So oh, got it, got it, yeah, got it. You got it, yeah. TikTok content ideas and like whatever, and the list goes a long, long time because it was just like whenever I had an idea, write it down, write that down, write that down, write it down. And then when the Valor actually came out, I kind of realized that I had to write scripts for it, and. The TikToks that you normally see, it's it's me kind of speaking consecutively about a single subject with the Valorant accent for around like 40 to minute long, 40 seconds a minute long. And Jake, those things take so many fucking tries. You have no clue how many takes it took for one of them. And sometimes it's like my friend recording. So he would have to sit with me for like half an hour straight, just listening to me incessantly say the same lines over and over and over again. Like the one about the Valorant player gets pulled over. I had to sit in a car outside. I think it was, that one took like an hour just to, to time the music right, to time everything else right, and time the philanthropy or whatever. Um, but it used to be writing things down, like idea by idea, my notes app, and now it just pops up, and then I write out a script for it, and then boom, I just roll with it and see what happens. So yeah. Crazy, crazy. Do you think that you are the, uh, the only Valorant player that's going to be at Harvard? I can say I'm the only Valorant content creator. That, that I know of that's going to be at Harvard. All right, cool. I, I can use that. Yeah, the only Valent content creator who's going to be at Harvard. Because uh, in my streams, there's a couple of the Harvard people who like, uh, students who are like, hey, I see your TikTok, and they play Valent. They're not nearly as good as me, though, because obviously, because like, I'm like the king of gold and shit, you know, so. <laughs> <laughs> let them know, yeah. let them know. <laughs> you you got to let them know, baby. <laughs> Well, I mean, that's all I got for you for now, but I, I definitely want to continue this in the future because, like, dude, I, I feel like picking your brain. You're so well-spoken. Like, you got the great setup. I should have freaking expected this already, but, dude, so well-spoken. It's such well-thought answers. You're laughing. So I'm kidding. I'm actually joking. Your, your answer sucked. <laughs> Man. Oh, just like your last name. <laughs> Yo! I knew he was going to Harvard. Dude's quick with it. <laughs> oh my god um, yeah but either way the floor is yours man any any last words that was tremendous man um any last words well first of all um, thank you for taking the opportunity i've followed you on twitter for a long long time the the most up-to-date esports news got to go on twitter and see what jake posted today um w of course and um other than that for like a lot of valent players in the community i feel like if you want to check out my stuff my twitch i stream a lot but i'm really grateful and I emphasize this, I'm grateful and for all the support that the Valley community has given me and all the opportunities that the Valley community has given me over the past couple of months. And uh, I can't wait to see what I can do in the future. So yeah, not even trolling. Fucking love you guys. Heck yeah, Willie boy! <laughs> <laughs> that was lit, oh. man. 